Hello, everyone. It is time for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship to head to Motown, the Motor City. Brian Till with you. Calvin Fish will take a look at what the weekend might be like. And I say might, Calvin, because it is such an unknown. The IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship has run in Detroit before at Belle Isle. You'll remember some great races there. But this is a completely different ball game. Michelin Pilot Challenge ran on the new circuit downtown last year. But this is new for almost all of the WeatherTech drivers, with the exception of one. That's right. Joey Hand competed last year in Michelin Pilot Challenge, Brian. And uh, he'll have circuit knowledge going in. But to your point, all of these teams going it this weekend with very little knowledge. There can be some crossover with the IndyCar teams that are represented in our GTP class, of course, in terms of talking to the engineers. What did you feel? What did you see? I understand the racetrack has had some resurfacing since last year. So it's going to have an added nuance to that as well. But... I think it's a level playing field, but we are on a street circuit, and that is where the Cadillacs have absolutely dominated over the last few seasons. For example, the 0-1 cars now won four of the last five street races that we've run at Detroit and at Long Beach. So I really feel they may go into this weekend, maybe as the pre-race favorites, but it's such an unknown for all of the four manufacturers that will be racing in the GTP class this weekend. I just find this track so different, Calvin. I know that you drove on the downtown street circuit years ago, as did I, and it was incredibly rough. Spent a little time, I think three races I did at the Belle Isle circuit. It was always a very different feel to me. I felt like Belle Isle was very open for a street circuit. This one, man, I, I think a GTP car, both watching it on the racetrack and from the cop cockpit, is going to feel really big in some of these areas. It is. Physically, it's a big race car, much bigger than the DPI car that we replaced two years ago, Brian. So it's going to be tight around here. Talking to the team, they anticipate the majority of these corners around this nine-turn layout are going to be in low gear, in first gear. So having the car turn in sweet, having a good change of direction through some of the sectors will be a key. But I really think power down, drivability, and that's with that GM power plant being normally aspirated compared to the turbo engines and the other three cars are going to really play into that. But I think tire choice as well, Brian. We saw the zero one car take the victory at Long Beach by doing no tire change there on the one uh, stopper strategy that we're expecting everyone to employ here in this 100-minute sprint race. This is a real, real wild card, and we're digging deep into this season right now, and this is round five, halfway point of a nine-race championship for GTP in 2024. Well, you keep talking about the 0-1. Let me change a number, and it'll just be the first one. We'll talk about the 31, another Cadillac. They have a shot at this? Oh, they do. I mean, they have a great street course set up as well. Uh, Pippo Dura, I mean, GM have won all four pole positions this year. Pippo won three in a row, and then Seb took the last one at WeatherTech Raceway. And the 31 car, they should be moving to the championship, Brian. They're a little ways back now, but they've had three runner-up finishes um, they also had that big incident with Pippo at Sebring. So the car is on fine form. Jack Aiken, we talked about him being on the back foot a little bit so far this year, going to circus that he does not know. Well, this is a level playing field for everyone. So he's going to feel good going into this weekend. They're definitely going to be a factor here. All right. Well, some teams we haven't talked about yet, and that would be Wayne Taylor racing both the 10 and the 40. Did you ever think coming into this season that we would get to this point in the season and see the 10 especially? So far back in the championship? No, because they're always a fact, right? They finished runner-up in this championship four years in a row. Uh, but they're now in a drought, Brian. They haven't won since 2022 at Road America back in August of that year. And it's not that they haven't been a factor for a win many times last year, but it's getting desperate. And now they're over 300 points behind in this championship. But what point are they out of it? Yes, they'll go out and just try and you know, win the rest of the races and see how the chips play out at the end of the year. But you may get into a scenario where they're going to have to support the sister car. The 40 car still sits in a really strong championship position. They had the lead in the points where we tied for the lead going into Long Beach. Then Delatraz had his moment there at a P4 finish at WeatherTech Raceway. So they're still very much in the hunt. I think it's about 113 points back. But um, at what point, if they're running line astern, does the 10 car have to give up potential position to that 40 car because they're in a much uh, stronger championship position? So it's a tough position for Ricky Taylor and Philippe Albuquerque. Hey, one of the words that you just used was desperate. And I know that they're looking, especially the 10, looking for podium finishes. But what about the BMW squad, Team RLL and BMW? I mean, they've got to be feeling a sense of desperation, too. They've been fast this season. They just haven't had the results. 
Yeah, and I think if you reflect back to last year, they went in the final round of the championship with a shot at the championship. So they got that victory somewhat inherited at Watkins Glen last year. So they broke the duck there. And you would think, because their program got on board very late, they were the latest of the four manufacturers at the time to really get their cars out and running. So they started 2023 on the back foot, had some success. They felt that they were going to be much stronger starting 2024 with the notebook written in terms of all of the tracks that we go to. But it hasn't really played out. They were on the front row at Long Beach, really made a bit of a mess of the strategy there with one of the cars. So they've been knocking on the door, but you got to feel deep down there's a lot of pressure within that whole organization to come through, not only get a podium their first of the year, but also a big victory. They've got to get back on the top step. I'm really wondering, too, about the data from these different manufacturers that ran there in Michelin Pilot Challenge. BMW ran there. Is there any shock data that might translate over to the GTP program? Who knows? But Let's talk about GTD. We saw Michelin Pilot Challenge run there at GT Base Cars last year in the competition. Yes, pardon the pun, was a little over the top at times, if you remember the incident with McGinnis. I mean, just it seems like a really good GT racetrack, but uh, the prototypes will have to remain to be seen. But the data sharing between the Michelin Pilot Challenge teams and the big brothers in WeatherTech, how much data do you think translates? I think you're going to grab every little nuance that you can. So you're going to talk to other drivers. You're going to look at onboard laps. You're going to be in the sim. We talked about the GTP teams talking to their IndyCar engineering squads there to try and get a leg up. But there's a lot of track time this weekend. What I do anticipate, Brian, with this short track is the times are going to be super close. I expect a very compact field in terms of uh, lap time. So qualifying uh, on Peacock on Friday afternoon should be fun to watch because everyone knows that track position could really set up your whole weekend here. So, uh, but yes, you're going to ask, you're going to talk to everyone, find out everything you can. Everyone will be out on that track walk on Thursday afternoon just to try and see the shape of the course and where the bumps and the patches are and where the grip may or may not be. Kind of like Monaco as far as qualifying and what it's going to do for you in the race. But it's the Motor City, right? I mean, Ford, Chevy, the Motor City, you want to win there. And Chevy, I think, has been showing some better form as of late. Both of those cars are new, the Mustang and the Corvette. But Chevy seems to have the upper hand on the development right now. Any reason to be excited about this uh, battle between the Detroit Marks this weekend? Has Ford found a little bit more or is this racetrack perhaps better suited? Well, they haven't really done any testing since the last round of the championship, and they struggled a little bit at WeatherTech Raceway. So there's still early days with them. The Chevrolet Corvette got out a lot sooner than the Ford did, the Mustang, in terms of getting out on the track and racking up the miles. So they're in a much more accelerated position as we come to this round of the championship. Everyone just wanted to see this rivalry, Ford versus GM on the streets of Detroit. I think it may be next year before we really see Ford in with a shot of victory. But you never know. You can just roll off the trailer. The car is well suited. We mentioned Joey Hand has experience there. He's going to certainly give the team a bit of a direction in where to go for setup and what's important there. But I think for the Corvette, they're definitely showing some strength there. Brian, they had a podium run uh, with the number four car at WeatherTech Raceway. Tommy Miller then scored a double victory with the Alec Udell in SRO competition at Coda a couple of weekends ago. So the car looks really good to me, and it's only a matter of time before they break through and get their first win. Well, let's talk about championship. 56 points, I think, is the difference between Heinrich Creo in their AO Porsche and Barnacote and Hawksworth in the Lexus. I look at this racetrack and part of me thinks, hey, this is a Porsche kind of racetrack. Point and shoot, get it turned, get that engine sitting down, get it off the corners. But then I look at the Lexus and how strong it has been on street circuits over the last couple of seasons. Who has the better advantage there? And can Hawksworth and Barnacote kind of work their way back and chew into that 56 point margin? Yeah, I think for the Lexus boys, they have a lot more experience, right? Um, the two youngsters, Prio and Heinrich, have done an amazing job, 22 and 23-year-old uh, drivers. Uh, they're, the, they're the future for IMSA, and they're doing a great job with that championship league, big win at WeatherTech Raceway. But when you look at Ben Barnico, he's undefeated on a street course since two, middle of 2022. So he's going to be on a high going in. Jack wants to rebound from that little mistake that he made at Long Beach. We expect him to be on top form. So it should be fun. But I think all 11 uh, entries there um, are going to be good to look at. Certainly Parker Thompson, Frankie Montecalvo. Typically in GT Day, Lexus, Lexus has done it again, double entry to see if they can uh, maybe just get a little bit more information through the race race weekend, go in a different direction, maybe to start the race weekend, confer afterwards, see which is the way to go, potentially. I think it's going to be awesome. I mean, you look at it too, and this is different than Long Beach GTP and GTD Pro. So 
Traffic density is a little less, and they're all pro drivers, so maybe that'll help on this tight street circuit. So good things to come qualifying at 440 on Peacock on Friday, and then the race on USA and Peacock 3 o'clock on Saturday. I'm up at Mid-Ohio today checking out the new racing surface here. We'll be here with Michelin Pilot Challenge in just a couple of weeks. Stay tuned for Detroit Motor City Madness coming your way this weekend. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.